We're live. Hello, everybody. This is uh, this is starting my uh, third hour of streaming or <laughs> on Twitter Spaces today. So you know, if uh, if I'm not making any sense anymore, it's uh, it's complete mental exhaustion. I'm I'm. It's all starting to shut down now. For, fortunately, I've got a long weekend this weekend. Uh, so I'm here with um, some some people you may know from the the G Delt the the. Um, MongoDB World Hackathon streams that we've been producing for the last few weeks. I'm here with uh, Nick Raboy, who's going to um, be doing some geospatial queries, I believe, on the GDELT data set. That's going to be lots of fun. And um, also, I'm here with Shane, who is uh, just before that, just going to give us a short um, introduction to how to get started with the hackathon, how to get registered, and what's kind of expected of you if you're nearing the end of your project, um, uh, and how to get how to get that submitted. So, do you want to take that away, Shane? Sure, I will do. Uh, thank you, Mark. So, um, yeah, this look as we keep saying on most of these streams. If you're watching this afterwards, fast forward about ten minutes. If you've already seen any of the other streams, if you're watching it live. I'm sorry, uh, I am the chief arm wrangler uh, for the hackathon. Uh, we are trying to get, obviously, participation and everybody aware of the hackathon. So if you're already aware of it, jump forward if you're watching this later. If you're not, here is the uh, general overview. It seems to take me about 10 minutes to do this, and I keep trying to say I'm going to do it any quicker, but I don't get to do it any quicker. So um, help me I out. I've done it myself. I know exactly what you mean. It takes 10 minutes to get through these slides and there's just nothing we can do about it. No, no, no. So first of all, uh, what's the hackathon? What's MongoDB World? Uh, MongoDB World is our flagship event for MongoDB. We've had it virtually for the last two years, of course, in COVID, but we're now really excited to have it back live and in person again. So it's going to be on in New York on the 7th and 9th of June. Uh, so pretty close actually so very much looking forward to that and i know this team and a lot of the other teams in mongodb are very frantically busy trying to get everything ready for that so what we're doing in the build-up for this is running a hackathon um and we're running this hackathon virtually and so it takes a little bit more lift a little bit more effort to get everybody together but to register we've made it super simple you go to mongodb.com forward slash world up in the banner, you have the hackathon link, and you simply click that as the arrows in the circle are telling you to there. And then you get to the hackathon page, which has all the information about the hackathon. Uh, so you can scroll away, find out everything that's involved in the hackathon, the data set that we're working with, the timelines, etc., as well, too. But I will give you uh, an overview of that. So if you are already a member of the MongoDB community on our forums, Simply clicking that register for hackathon button gets you straight into our forums and joins you into the hackathon group automatically. So it's one click, it's super easy. And so far to date, we've got over 550 people registered for the hackathon, which we're thrilled with, uh, and that's superb. If you're not a member of our community or our forums, and you should be, um, you do have to register. So usual things, first name, last name, email address, passwords, those sort of things, or you can use Google, any of the auths to, to sign in as well too and um that will just join you right up as well so very very straightforward to participate once you do that you will be on the welcome page for the hackathon which has a number of sections with loads of links loads of resources all about the theme all about the tools all about how to learn about mongodb all about how to learn about gdelt which is the data set that we've been using for this hackathon um, and also then once you're in the forums you will see the structure that we've set out there is really, really trying to make it as simple as possible for people to participate and to share and to put forward their skills if they don't have an idea. So you say what technologies uh, you have experience in and you know, hopefully we'll match make you and somebody will snap you up and join you into the project. Or if you've got an idea for a project but not necessarily the full stack of skills to deliver that project, we have another category just for you, which is projects looking for hackers. So list your project, what you want to do, the type of skills you have, and the skills that you're looking for from team members. Um, and hopefully that will work too. And we've seen a number of teams come together like that. So everything is happening in the forums, and but also here on the live streams. Um, as Mark said at the intro, this is the, yeah, we did one Twitter spaces, and this is the second live stream today. So. 
Uh, we, we have seen a lot of each other. Nick is over in the West Coast in the US, so he's only just woken up. So it's our first chance to see him now today. But no doubt we'll, he'll do the heavy lifting later on. It's but we're woken we're, up. I've been <laughs> up for like half a day now. <laughs> <laughs> indeed, indeed. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yes, children do that to you, right? They get you up super early and do stuff. So um, yeah, yeah, that's the only time I get my peace is when I'm in, it's in the morning <laughs> before everyone wakes up. <laughs> Cool. So look, we, we live stream on YouTube and on Twitch um, multiple times a week and in different time zones to suit our global audience. So we do one earlier in the morning for myself and Mark, which suits the APAC region. And then at this time, usually uh, to take care of the US region as well, too. But they're all recorded uh, on YouTube. We've got a playlist for the hackathon, mongodb.com, mongodb YouTube. I don't know what the URL is anymore. This is where we're falling apart now because I'm talking about this too much already. Um, go to YouTube, look for MongoDB Official, isn't it? Yes, that's it. Uh, MongoDB Official channel, and you will find that we have a playlist there for the hackathon. This is, I think, our 15th or 16th video um, that's been live streamed, and they're all there. So don't feel that you've missed out on anything. Uh, you can review them all. And indeed, if you go into the events section in our forums for the hackathon, you will see all of the previous events listed there, and they all have the video for that event embedded into the feed as well, too. Uh, so everything is there. But this is where we uh, do live coding, as you'll see coming up with Nick shortly. Um, it's where we have been teaching people about MongoDB. We've teaching people how to import the GDELT data set into MongoDB, and we were teaching how people how to work with that data set. And, and so um, there's a lot of valuable information to go back over uh, in our live streams. This session is um, essentially where we tasked Nick with very little notice to come on board this team to build and hack with everybody else. Um, and we gave him a brief outline of build a news browser. Now, he's got some help, et cetera, Mark and our other colleague, Joe Drumgool, and others have helped build stuff. But essentially, you know, Nick is our guinea pig here. He's our hacker putting stuff together, working and learning with the just GGL data set at the same time as everybody else. So this session, you'll see what Nick has built, and he can talk you through that as soon as I uh, finish talking. If you want to find out more information too in another format and you like listening to podcasts while you're out walking the dog or ignoring the rest of your family, uh, you can listen to our podcast, episode 105. Uh, myself and Mark are there again, along with our uh, colleague, Adrienne, and also with Mike Lynn, who's the host of our podcast. If you like the MongoDB podcast, like and subscribe in all the places that you get uh, that your podcasts from. The why participate, and I, I think I'm doing well on time, and this is this I'm getting through this one quick. Um, why participate? Obviously, we want to, you know the, the goal of being in a hackathon is uh, you know everybody communally coming together to solve problems, to fix things, to code together, etc. As well, too. But we do want to reward you for your time and effort. So we've had a number of different ways in order to do that, and we've been doing this throughout. So. We've had people join us on the live stream, show their progress of their own projects. They get swag. These exclusive, not available in the shops, not available anywhere else, but joining uh, the MongoDB Hackathon this year, these t-shirts. We have a Hackathon swag store that we'll be making available for people for participating. So there's a number of ways you can get these. You can come on a live stream, share your demos, and we'd love to see that, especially as last week or next week is the last week. And so we'd like to have this more of an office hours type style where we have people coming on, showing their demos. We're asking questions, answering questions as well too. Anybody brave enough to do that will get some swag. Anybody, we also have a project team section up on the forums. Anybody who lists their project currently, that's not a submission, it's just saying, this is what we're working on. Here are the people involved. This is what we're doing. Here's a link to our repo. Anyone who lists their project, which is three fields to fill in, we'll also get some of this swag too. So it really couldn't be simpler to get some exclusive World Hackathon swag um, um, for participating in the Hackathon and doing some things. We're also trying to help you out. If you are fortunate enough to have an opportunity to be in New York on uh, the beginning of next month, the second week in June, uh, we have super discount for the World event itself. So 50% off the ticketed price for World, which is the best discount available 
anywhere across the MongoDB organization. We're very exclusive here in the hackathon, and we got this nice 50% discount. So MDB hack 50 at checkout will get you 50% off whatever the ticket, that current ticket price happens to be. We also have an Atlas credit code for you all, $100 of Atlas credits. You can enter the hackathon and build whatever you need to build using one of our free tiers, our M0 tier, will be perfectly fine with enough bandwidth and compute and storage to allow you to build your project. But if you want to take it a little bit further and you move up into one of our paid tiers, then you can avail of this $100 of Atlas credits that once you've signed up for an Atlas account, you will simply go into the billing section, add World Hack 22 in there, and bingo, you get $100 of Atlas credits added to your account. So it's not going to cost you anything. But we have some super prizes as we get towards the end of the hackathon. So we reveal this at the beginning of this week, and it's great to re-emphasize it again here. Uh, for the grand prize, the team winners, a team of up to four people, we have some tech hardware, Oculus Rift Quests. I, if I could enter, win one of those, I would, uh, but I can't because I'm not allowed. Um, that would be great. You also get a free ticket to MongoDB World. If you've already bought a ticket to MongoDB World, we'd refund you. Uh, so it's still a free ticket. We'll give you some more Atlas credits. We are going to feature the winning projects on stage at MongoDB World, and that's superb kudos to get. So one of our executives and one of the keynotes is going to be talking about uh, the hackathons and the projects that we built, et cetera, as well, too. So it will be featured. So that's a great kudos. We'll also have a MongoDB swag pack for that winning team. Um, and we're going to perpetually, you're going to have a badge beside your name in the forums that you won the World Hackathon 22. Uh, which cannot be bought in the shops either. And I have to design it. It hasn't been designed yet, but we'll get it designed by the end of next week. Uh, three runners-up prizes for teams in total as well. Nintendo Switch Lights, still a super prize um, and you know very much in demand. I know they're hard to get, I think, depending on where you are in the world sometimes as well too. Free tickets to MongoDB World again, some more Atlas credits, the swag pack, and you're also going to get a profile badge, which is uh, priceless, added to your profile <laughs> in perpetuity on our forums. I really messed up this prize list on the Twitter space this morning. <laughs> Sorry, you're trying to hit your 10-minute target. Well, you've missed your 10-minute Yeah, target. No, this is just... supposed to take 10 minutes. This is like harsh. <laughs> you're, you're, you're... I'm not joining a stream with two of you on it anymore. I have one. <laughs> one, you're ganging up on you. I feel like we're ganging two. up on you. Yeah, two of you, you're ganging up. Anyway, I'm nearly done. Uh, so... <clears throat> But every entrance who submits a project into the hackathon will get a prize. So we've got exclusive stuff for them as well, too. And what is what makes a, a project eligible? As long as your project is built using MongoDB in some, at some point and also uses the GDAL data set that we've been live streaming about for mm -hmm. a number of weeks now, then it's an eligible project. Uh, you can lots, use lots of other technologies. I think that was one of the questions we had on the Twitter spaces this morning. We don't mind what other technologies you use, but MongoDB needs to be there, and the data set needs to be g -dealt. Um, and you're so going to get extra credit for using MongoDB in smart ways, right? So if you just get mm -hmm. it into MongoDB and then extract everything into, I don't know, plain text file, that's it's not going to be hugely valuable. But at the same time, if you do something interesting, you're, you're going to get points there. So it's it's like a balance. Yeah, totally. And it, look, the, obviously, you know, we want to kind of push towards using more and more of our services and products. So you can think of clever ways to use any of the application services that we have as well, too. And we've gone through some of those in the live streams and hopefully given you some hints and tips as to what you could do with your own projects. Um, the submission form will open next week. Very, very straightforward again, like everything that we try to do on our forums. Uh, it's simply a description of your project, a short video or screencast of your project in action with voiceover or whatever you want to do on that. Uh, by short, I mean about three minutes long. We get a lot of submissions. It's going to take a long time to review these. We want to have a link to your repo, too, so that we know that it's your work and it's original um, and that you put it together. And we'd be judging that on how creative it is, how well designed it is, as Mark says, the use of both MongoDB and also the GDAL data set and, and how you put that together. So loads of scope for submissions. Um, and we are really, really, I suppose, both anxious and uh, interested to see what comes in submissions next week. When I'm they excited. Open. I think there's yeah. going to be some really cool ideas. So No, it's going to be great. It's going to be great. So 
that is the end of my spiel pretty much just to remind people of the timelines we started this in april the 11th so we are at the end of the fifth week and we've got one week left so one week leading up to may 20th uh, for the submissions this slide has been wrong for five weeks and i fixed it this morning when i got you sick fixed of it I got sick of being repeatedly pointed out that I had the date. Well, not the date wrong, but the time wrong. There isn't any time. What did you call it earlier this morning, Mark? The international it's uh, May 20th, anywhere on earth. So providing it's May 20th, wherever you are, that form will be open for you to submit your... Um, yeah, there you go. And anywhere you are, entry. May 20th, we will take that submission. So that's it. And we really, really can't wait to see what you're all going to build and what you have been building, etc. as well, too. And speaking about building stuff, Mr. Nick Raboy is now going to wow us with what he's been building. Sure. I think it's all like, uh, thanks for that, I, Shane. Yeah, that was quicker. I think I feel I don't know, maybe. No, I think you're actually two minutes longer than this morning. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, man. I think uh, I think it's late enough in the day for me to start drinking now. <laughs> <laughs> I just woke up too, right? And, uh, and on that note, cheers. <laughs> um, Go for it. So yeah, if yeah. you're if you're here, um, let us know where you're tuning in from. It's always interesting to to see where people people are joining from. Uh, I know it's it's the start of the day for Nick. Uh, it's the end of the day for me and Shane. Um, mm -hmm. I think Shane, you're going to go away and start your weekend now, aren't you? It's just it's a nice three day weekend. Yeah, yeah, not too bad. Awesome. Man. There's a there's a soccer match to watch tonight as well too. So excellent. Well, have fun. Um, I've <laughs> I'm going to the I'm gonna disappear because I'm going to make it messy for all of you too, and I'm going to take up too much of your valuable screen real estate. So uh, I will tune in on my phone. Oh awesome. man, we we don't even get the tune in from the computer treatment. It's the phone treatment. <laughs> <laughs> hey. well, okay, I'll stay in the computer in the background while he has a beer. <laughs> all right. See there you, you go. See you, Shane. All right. Not rid of me. You know? uh, <laughs> <laughs> the problem is, if you've got two people hitting that remove button at the same time, they go away and they come back again. <laughs> Not the first time that's happened. <laughs> Anyways. So, I'm drinking a paper plane. You insisted that I had a cocktail, Nick. So Yeah, um, I did insist. I and I've plane. never heard of paper plane either. This is... Uh... It's a it's a kind of new classic, as it were. It's invented in uh, New York, I think, sometime in the last decade. Um, really? It's, it's a kind of citrusy, slightly bitter, sort of light and zesty cocktail. It's very good. Interesting. All right. I'll maybe you'll have to show me what this is sometime. <laughs> uh, yeah. Um. Uh, all right. Should we jump right into it, man? Yeah, let's do it. All right, so I think uh, we've probably got about 30 to 45 minutes worth of material here to, to go through. Um, the topic is uh, kind of map data, geo geojson data, geospatial query data, um, to kind of add some spice to the hackathon app. Um, so I know you've seen it already in the project. I, I do have that heat map um, as the hero image. And, and before we actually, before I go any further, um, up on my screen, this is the GitHub repo that I'm working off of, and I do daily commits, sometimes more than that, uh, with whatever I'm up to. Um, some of it on the main, some of it on the my personal branch. Um, so if you wanna, if you wanna get the source code for anything that I'm doing, this is your this is your place to go. And, and feel I'll free paste to paste that in the chat for you. Oh, you got it. Should I paste I, it or I, you got it? I had it earlier. But yeah, I'll I'll get I'll it. I'll copy it. Oh, you got it. Yeah, it's fine. Carry on. All right. Uh, yeah, feel free to rip off uh, anything I've done, include it in your project, make it awesome. I've ripped off mu much of what I've done from somebody else, so uh, we can just reinvent the wheel. Um, but yeah, so we're going to get some some GeoJSON data uh, plotted as a heat map. Uh, what I also want to do is I want to do some uh, geospatial uh, querying. So I came up with this idea the, a few days ago um so it's very recent um but the idea is that say you want to drill down on this heat map um this is just a random heat map that i'm looking at at the map box site well, let's say i wanted to click on a certain area where there's some activity and display the news stories for that region well i could get the latitude and longitude coordinate from the map through map box 
that latitude and longitude coordinate is stored in MongoDB. And MongoDB will let you do uh, queries based on that latitude and longitude uh, nearby. So you can you can provide it a distance, you can provide it a point, and it will query uh, within that region, um, which is pretty cool. So that's that's where I'm headed for this one. Uh, any any concerns? Any questions, Mark? Are you ready for this wild ride? I I am ready for this wild ride. Uh, all right. I think before actually before I even hit the code, um, I'm throwing out the word GeoJSON a lot. Um, if you're if you've never worked with a map before, this this term might be a little foreign to you. It's just the it's just JSON data formatted a special way that uh, the mapping people like. Um, it looks kind of like this. What's on my screen? Um, you provided to whether or not it's going to be a point, a series of points, and then some coordinates. And it gets a little more advanced, but we're going to basically be using this really, really uh, slimmed down version of GeoJSON for everything we do today. Uh, but it is a spec. It's a formal spec. It's, I'm not making it up. Um, and it's primarily used for mapping. Did you know if you upload a GeoJSON file to a GitHub repo, um, GitHub will automatically render it as a map? I did not know that. It's a seriously cool feature. <laughs> uh, yeah, that does sound pretty cool and probably pretty helpful. <laughs> yeah, I used to use it for checking my GeoJSON files before. Like, there's more tools available now online for checking your GeoJSON. Um, yeah, but yeah, that was that was one way to do it. Yeah, and, and a lot of times, I mean, in fairness, uh, working with a map library, they're not always the easiest. Um, so if you can avoid jumping through hoops just to visualize a, a GeoJSON file, take it, go with it. Uh, let me crack open my code editor here. I've done just some stripping down because we're gonna we're gonna walk through it together so that way you can get a a, a look and feel for what what is happening in this project. Um, I did stream about um, how we used MongoDB in a few streams already. Uh, it's not gonna be too important that you've already seen those streams prior to this one uh but this is the mongodb js file that we've worked with with a few of them it's it basically just establishes our connection to mongodb it caches that connection so that way our endpoint functions uh with with nextjs uh can actually make use of that cached connection rather than re-establishing a connection on every function call and it gives us a better experience uh that's about all i'll go into this if you do want to learn more, the videos are on demand for those previous live streams. It's it's worth checking out. They are worth checking out. I learned a lot on that stream. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what we will be looking at is, like you've already seen this trim down Mapbox.js file, which is just going to be a React component that we're going to populate. And a lot, most of it actually is going to be copy and paste from the Mapbox website. Um, we have our news.js uh, endpoint function, which the last time we saw it, it looked like this. So we basically have a query uh, that's going to look for all documents that have the info field, which has our website information. As the year, we're going to limit it to 2022, although in 2022, there's still like 9 million documents that we have to <laughs> sift through. It's smaller than the entire result set, but it's still quite large. And then we did some projections, uh, which I still have that ID in there. It's like it keeps coming back in my code. Uh, I know that <laughs> Mark, Mark lectured me on this one. You don't need the ID projection in there. Um, but I didn't lecture you. I just thought you'd like to know. <laughs> I did like to know, but uh, yeah, it didn't stick for some reason. I think it's not in the I code. It. Yeah, you keep typing that back in. It's weird. Yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, one thing that I did put in here that I haven't really gone over um, in the previous um, streams, this is the hack I'm using to get rid of the duplicate documents. <laughs> Uh, from showing up in the news feed. It's uh, not the most ideal thing because it's all client side, but uh, it, it works so that way we don't have like 19 of the same uh, depressing news story show up in our feed. You could um, group by URL, I guess. Um, so yeah, could, but then I got to change my my simple find into an aggregation pipeline. and. Uh, yeah, fair enough. I, I hadn't really registered that that wasn't an aggregation pipeline. You know, I just, as soon as I've got kind of a project or a skip, I'm I, even though you can do those with find, I tend to just like jump into the aggregation pipeline anyway. Yeah. I don't, don't really know why. 
And really, I mean, I w it wouldn't take much to convert this into an aggregation pipeline. It's, I have I have a match query right here. Project yep. is an actual stage. I mean, it, it'd be very small changes to make this an aggregation pipeline. Yeah. I'm not, then, yeah. I'm not in any way suggesting that you do that now. There's plenty yeah. to get through, isn't there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, maybe if there's time next week before we submit, I, who knows? Cool. Um, but yeah, it's it's worth checking out. Um, so we have that. The goal here uh, with this news.js file, we need to make some tweaks. We need to make some tweaks uh, to include uh, the latitude and longitude information. Should it be passed? Like we have this optional uh, pagination stuff, and we'll just include optional uh, latitude and longitude, which will trigger a a geospatial query if it exists. So that's that's the goal with this file. Uh, what what file do we have here? What is this? This is a, a file, a new file actually that we can work with. So this is, um, let's think of this as, you know, we've done the cert, uh, we've clicked on the map, we have options. We could either reload the data that exists currently on the page uh, after clicking on the map, which um, from what I'm told, isn't too rough of a thing to do. You just have to work with your state variables in the, in the parent and child uh, components of React. Or you can uh, take the even, maybe you can say lazier way out is what I'm going to do uh, and just redirect to a new page after clicking the map. Um, so that's what I'm, that's what my intention is here. You click the map, it sends you to this new page. This new page will receive the, the, the latitude and longitude coordinates from the URL bar um, and then uh, pass that into our news JS uh, API endpoint and get, get their data based on the, those location coordinates. It'll be very similar to what we had in our other files when it came to using uh, this news endpoint, um, with the exception now that we have two two optional parameters. And finally, we have one more file that we're going to be working with today. I'm just trying to lay down the foundation here so we know where we're going. And uh, I'll probably say it 100 more times as well. But uh, this is our root index.js file. This is our parent file, uh, which you can see this is essentially what we're going to be doing with the with the latitude and longitude stuff. The thing about this file is I'm actually going to get my heat map data, all of the all of the points inside of this file. I'm going to load it up front. Um, I could uh, load that data, like um, the heat map data ad hoc, like I do uh, with the news data. And I probably should because it's a lot of records. Instead, we're going to load that data up front. I'm going to limit it to just a few thousand records so that way it doesn't explode. Uh, and uh, that way I'll be able to pass that data into the map box. So that way it loads pretty pretty fast um, at load time. So that way it doesn't have to do any any queries or anything like that. Um, but you have, you have like options. Pre-rendering, is that the idea? You do this at build time? Uh, it won't pre-render the map, but it will already have the data for you to pass into the map. So map box can either take a URL. So we could provide it an API endpoint and it could hit it at load time and wait for it to populate and, and whatnot. Or we can pass it um, an array of uh, GeoJSON features, um, okay. which in this case we will do here. So we'll have that GeoJSON. We'll just pass it in. So that way Mapbox can load as fast as it as it possibly can. Cool. At least I think I think it'll load as fast as it possibly can. It's been fast for me. I, I don't know. It's been working out. But uh, we may we may need to reevaluate um, later. So that's the plan. I think what we should do is we should start with the map box stuff, because right? that's uh, going to be our largest dependency here. Um, and like I said, uh, we do have, uh, at least I do have this map box documentation up. Um, and really, we can get by with which is copy paste. So this is react documentation directly on the map box website. Um, I do already have an account. You do need an account with Mapbox to get your API key, which I'm not going to share mine. Um, but a lot of this is just copy and paste. Um, so for example, I think I already have the import here. Uh, what I do want to search for is, um, I don't know if I have this line right here. Let's check real quick. Um, yeah, I already have it on line three. Um, so I have I have just the imports in there. Uh, what we will need is we will need to get a reference to our map container, which is where our map is going to load at, at runtime. 
And that's not the data of the map. It's just the map uh, HTML visual elements. Um, and then we need a reference to um, the, the map itself after it loads. Um, so let's go ahead and copy that in. And it'll it'll hopefully start to make sense shortly. Let's let's paste that in. My tabs are gonna be off and drive me crazy. What was the command to, to fix this? Did we decide? Format the indentation. Document? Yeah. All right, it's fixed. It worked. It did not explode. Uh, so that's that's always nice. Uh, so we have the map container as per the documentation and the map. Um, now what I can do is I can go back into browser. I could use state variables for like the latitude and longitude and whatnot. Um, that's really going to be driven on uh, the data that's coming in. I, I probably don't need to work with state variables. Uh, what we do need is uh, the use effect. So I, I already have the use effect in there, so I can copy this. Paste that in. And it formatted. Beautiful. Uh, so this, what this does is when the page loads, uh, it'll check to see if uh, map current already exists because we don't want to keep re reinitializing it. Uh, and if it doesn't, then we can say new Mapbox GL. Uh, we can give it uh, what kind of uh, uh, overlay theme, like a dark mode, a light mode, a, a rivers mode. There's a lot of different modes that you can use. Uh, a latitude and longitude. Uh, do you have happen to have a latitude and longitude for me, Mark, that I can use? Oh, no. <laughs> no I'm throwing you on the spot here. You, you think I just memorized these numbers? No. <laughs> uh yeah. that's all right we can, I we can try and look one up. one up yeah let me look one up real quick try to get the center of i don't of even have there. an instance of compass up oh what nice so that will yeah. be yeah i'm hoping for the center so that way it gets most of the countries in there um although i could be wrong so that'll be a lot around long, with it because like lat long is is the way that everything deals with uh, um, points except for except for GeoJSON, which takes long lap. Yeah, I think this needs to be a negative and we can play around with it. At least we have a starting point. Mm -hmm. All right, copy that and paste it in. Does it have to be a negative too because it's south? Uh, right? Yeah, I think so. If not, we can play around with it. I would have then, forgotten that. You're, you're, you've, you've obviously been working with points more than I have. Recently. I have, but it's, it's been a while. I, I used to work for a, a maps company, but it's been so oh, long right. that I've forgotten pretty much most of what I've, uh, what I've known. Yeah, that <laughs> so, happens. So it's all good. Um, all right. So we have a Zoom. Um, I don't. Let's let's see if it if it does anything. May error out. I don't. I don't remember um, what the bare minimum is for this project, so that way it doesn't blow up. That okay. wasn't it. Oh, no, different error. <laughs> container. All right. uh, Ooh, container must. Be... Oh, all right. I don't have a container. I don't have a um, a map. It's it's not set, right? So. Oh uh, yeah, uh, the map container. Okay. Yeah, I stripped it out. So what we really want is um, like a div, and then in React it uses a ref. I think I think I could actually just rip it off of uh, the documentation once once more. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. So I have like never I said, used ref before, and kind but, of. Uh, yeah. It lets you it lets you play around with the it uh, the DOM element itself rather than just. Uh, just the data that's I'm inside sure of it. I've wanted to do that before and never found the docs for it. Oh well. Yeah, and this is this is important because uh Mapbox it's it's loaded through JavaScript. So it's it happens after the page loads. So you need in order to play around with it in React, you you need to have the reference to what it what it will exist as. Um it's not pre-rendered. Yeah. Yeah, I think I've done all sorts of weird stuff to get that working. And I think uh, there are other ways. Ugh. All right, let's see. 
closer. Uh, what, what happened to that error? Yeah, I don't know. It might be a race condition. Um, where do I have any errors? I you don't you don't have the console up. No, no errors. So you I have need... no errors. Oh, you know what? I am. I don't have this class. I'm using Tailwind, <laughs> uh, so we probably want to full hide it. So okay. I think it's what H full something like that. I am no good at Tailwind. I'm getting better. All right, here we have it. Oh yeah. All right. It's uh yeah this this works, and it's it's centered enough. I mean, could be better. <laughs> we could play around with it later. I, we missed all of the United States, but that's all right. Uh, <laughs> we'll worry about news in uh, well, South Scotland's America not in there either. The the most yeah the most uh, exciting stories right in Scotland. <laughs> We have a map. We have a map in uh, with, with React and Next. That's very cool. Um, so now we need to worry about adding layers um, and actually getting our GeoJSON correct. Um, so let's format our data. So if I have Compass up, we know that our data, where is it? Documents. We have latitude and longitude coordinates inside of the action. And we know that this document itself, if we were to get a result set, this is like under no circumstance a proper GeoJSON. So we need to do an aggregation pipeline to format this data into the format that we expect. Um, so that way we don't have to do it client side uh, because that would be kind of nasty. Let's let MongoDB handle that for us. Uh, so let's let's start working on our aggregation pipeline. And I'm I'm still gonna sling this the same story here. Use the aggregation pipeline builder. It will make your life uh, easier rather than trying to write it directly in code uh, because you will make a typo at some point in time and it'll ruin your whole day. I don't know if you've experienced that, Mark. Or you know, I I don't tend to these days. I I still push the the builder like you do, but um, yeah, it, yeah. No, I, but I tend to start in code these days. I, partly because you I do. really like to define each stage as a separate variable. Um, yeah, and then you know you. Yeah, you never um, find yourself uh, with uh, with no data at some point in time. Oh yeah, that happens all the time. <laughs> yeah, that's the problem. And then when you've got like uh, when your when your pipeline's five or more stages, and you're then you got to go through each one and make sure there's data. It just saves you a lot of time and troubleshooting if you do it directly in the builder. I've forgotten what it's called, but do you know we have a new debug stage now that you can you? use to. Yeah, you can use use it like you use it as an intermediate stage, and it will kind of give you a window into what the the documents were at that at that point. Really, in the pipeline. I, I, I yeah, it I was added. I think in five point one and five point two. You know what it's, it's called? Worth checking. Uh, Not just no. called debug, right? It. I, don't if, I honestly can't remember. I remember right. finding it. So, I did a. I've been doing a, a webinar on yeah. aggregation pipelines for the last few months, and um, I found it when I was going through the full list in the documentation. It sometimes takes stages a little while to make it into this drop down in yeah. the pipeline builder. Um, so it's yeah, it's not always at the kind of bleeding edge of what you can do with MongoDB. Got it. And, you know, there's a there's a possible chance that my compass is out of date. I don't think I've updated it for a while. Um, it's all good. <laughs> um, all right, so we have recent events. We know that there's a lot of millions of documents, 15.1 millions, it looks like. Um, I'm not going to try to preload all of that. So I'm going to start this off with a limit stage, and I'm just going to limit it, it to like a thousand documents to start with. Um, so that way we don't blow anything up. I'm going to do another stage. Uh, this is where we're going to start uh, manipulating our data. So um, I don't know if it'll allow me to bounce back and forth without. What, do you know if it'll allow me to bounce back and forth without losing what I've started? Um, Actually, uh, I yes. can look at this. I, I think you can in Compass. I don't think you can in the Data Explorer. But I can look I at wouldn't... this. Can you see that? You're just. Sorry, what are you talking about now? Oh no, I was going to be like, I forgot that I actually have a, a sample set here. I can just, because I just wanted to look oh, at yeah, the Oh yeah, yeah, you can look at the data. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> Sorry, I'm very confusing. 
that stage I was talking about is uh, the document stage. And I think it might be a bit different to what I thought. Um, Documents, right? But it there. was in that drop down list. Yeah. And maybe that doesn't seem full right. Text search. Yeah. They, the, so the documentation in the, on the docs site is returns literal documents from input values. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's not that. All right. Project for another day, right? Yeah. Um, all right. So we have a thousand or, uh, documents or less, uh, definitely a thousand here. Um, but what we want to do is we want to pull out this location and, uh, everything inside a location looks properly formatted. So mm -hmm. we have a, a GeoJSON feature here. We just need to properly format the parent information. Um, so let's do a project. And let's specify uh, the fields that we want. So um, we want it to be kind of wrapped as a feature. And actually, I may have another example here for you. So in the map box example, they actually have some GeoJSON that they work with to load that heat map. It's gonna make me suffer through this this dark mode that I don't know how to fix. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, I can't read that. Yeah, let me highlight it so that way it's still loading. It's they're they're not limiting it like I am. <laughs> Can I select all? All right. Not going to touch it. It's highlighted. It should be readable now, right? Yep. Yep. All right. Uh, so we have a, an array of features, and each one of these. Oh, it's still doing something. Um, we we have a feature, and we have a geometry, and then this looks kind of like what we have in ours. We have a point. Yeah. We have coordinates. Um, so let's start by doing the lower level stuff. So we want to do an object which has a type of feature. Mm -hmm. It has a geometry. And we don't need any properties for this example. That's just extra data that uh, may be helpful in, in other circumstances, but not, not for us today. Um, so what we can do with the, the project, I like that. Uh, first we can say, I don't need the project tag. Uh, we wanna have a feature field. Um, this is just gonna represent, um, and do this. Let's go ahead and say that we have a type. This is going to be a feature. And then we have a geometry. And this is going to be from our document. So it's going to be uh, action dot location. Uh, should that be a capital L? Oh, is it capital L? Sorry. I'm I think it is. Hearing now. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, I, th I, I think it is. I thought initially you typed to locate so. Um, yeah, so we have, uh, and you'll see why I did a feature here because I'm going to do a group to group all of these together into a features array because inside the okay. features array, we don't have a, a, like a child level field name called feature. Mm -hmm. Uh, but we look at our data, we have a type, we have a geometry, we, we have another type in there as well for point and we have the coordinates. So that, that looks good. And I, my highlighting just went away, but that's, that's good for that stage. Now let's do a group. We have a group and this is where we want to group by uh, this feature field um, the ID let's go ahead and say that uh, I don't know the ID is not very important to us so I'm just gonna I'm just gonna hard code it as one uh, because we're gonna get rid of it soon because it has no business in our GeoJSON uh, so I'm just gonna strip it out with a, a, a project in a minute okay. um, but what we can do is we have a features um, array that we want to create. Um, and this is gonna be what, what we're grouping upon here. You've got an end quote, but no start quote there. So you can good, either delete it or good add catch. Quote. <laughs> This is gonna be a features array though. Um, so what we can do is we can use one of the operators uh, for this. Am I missing a, did it create one for me? Yeah, all right. Um, we're gonna use one of the operators. We're gonna use the push operator um, for uh, that, that works with group. So, um, what that'll do is it'll allow us to push items uh, from the from the grouping, like the what's it? What's the word I'm looking for? The the calculation. I, I don't know what what word I'm looking for. It, yeah, 
I don't know. I mean, I guess it is calculating a new field from the from the other values by sort of yeah. Iteratively Basically, what I'm doing is I'm I'm taking the feature from this previous stage, hence the dollar sign. I'm pushing it into a features array which doesn't have to exist prior. Um, it's just going to create one, and uh, you can see on the right here we have an array of feature objects. Nice. Pretty, pretty nifty, right? Mm hmm Yeah, so you don't always have to use like a sum or a count or any of those um, calculation operators um, in a group. You can, there's other operators that do cool stuff as well. All right, final stage, uh, we don't need the ID um, and we do need some more information here. We need this feature collection at the top, which is a type, I believe, that highlights. It's a lot of data. Um, so we have a feature collection. So we can we can do another manipulation here. You might be able to do that in the group. I haven't I haven't tried experimenting on on what I can and ca cannot do in that stage, but it's just as easy to do it in, in another project stage. So what? Well, sorry, what are you doing in this stage? Yeah. Add more fields. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, I don't know actually. I suppose you already have because you've added the features. No, I don't know. I don't know. Eh, it's 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 not too bad to just add another project stage. So it's one. Not, no. I'm going to get rid of that ID and I'm going to for sure add zero this time um, instead of just leaving it off the board. I'm going to have a type, which is going to be feature collection. And then I also want uh, features to be passed along as well. Features being from the previous stage. There we go. We have a type and we have a features array. Yeah, awesome. So this is the data that we're going to work with. Um, so I'm just going to dump it out. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to go back into my code. I know it took a little longer than it had to, but I wanted to make sure all the steps were clear. Um, I'm going to go into the Git server side props. I'm going to go ahead and say uh, maybe var. I think I called it something partic particular heat map data is what I'm looking for. Equals await collection.aggregate. And that's spelled right. And I'm going to paste it in. And it did some formatting for me, which I'll accept. Uh, but this is what um, what we just did in Compass. And we're just going to dump it all to an array. A thousand records should be fine uh, for, for an array for us to handle. Um, and with that, we can return it. So that way, the rest of our application can make use of it after it's already been pre-rendered. And I'm just going to follow the same strategy I did here. So I'm going to copy this line. I'm going to call this um, heat map data. And uh, what do I got here? I think it's just heat map data. Um, actually, I think I want the first, the first, the first result because I'm going to end up with an array of arrays. So I want uh, the first one should be good. So we should have data at this point in time. So we can go back to Mapbox now and actually create our layer for the heat map. So let's go ahead and rip off some more code. Um, so we have we have this. This is not React, this page. This is uh, just, I think, just pure JavaScript. But we can, we do have the bits and pieces available to us. So the first thing we want to do is we want the load. So when the map loads, then we can start working with it. And I'm not copying everything because all this layers is uh, pretty specific to um, this particular map box example. I'm going to copy it. We'll, we will be adding a layer, but for now, let's just start with that. Um, let's go to our use effect. And I'll paste that. And I will close that. Um, so we're going to call this something. We're going to call this maybe uh, news. We can call it something else if that conflicts with something. Um, the data that we're working with, I'm actually passing it in uh, just so that way there's clarity here. So we created this heat map data inside of the Git server side props. And I'm actually retrieving it inside of this particular parent component. So heat map data. And I am going to my Mapbox um, 
component, which we're going to navigate to again in just a second. And I'm passing that data in. And if I go there, I'm receiving it up top here. I, I call it hero here because that's what, when I ripped this project off of Jesse Hall, he had called it a hero image. So I'm just calling it like a hero map now. I, I don't know. We can call it something else if that doesn't work. Anybody who's have, been using Twitter Bootstrap or something like that will recognize that the idea of a hero. hero yeah, box. maybe. So, I wonder where the name came from. That's a good question. I don't, <laughs> I don't know who decided to call that a, a hero image or a hero <laughs> element. But that's where the data is coming from. So with that, we can actually just plug it in. Uh, because like I said, you don't have to provide a URL. You can oh, provide nice. a variable. Um, and that's our data source now. But adding a data source does not mean rendering a data source. So we still need to add a map layer. Um, so let's go back into this. And I'm going to add this heat map layer. So let's figure out where it ends. It may be, may be huge. So let's, we'll, we're going to cut a lot of this out. Copy it. I'm going to copy paste here today. This all still needs to happen inside of the, the load. Because if we try to do it outside of the load, there's a chance that our map might not e exist yet. Um, so a lot of this is style information. I'm going to remove it. And the ID or the source, we called it news. Let's call this one uh, maybe news heat, like for news heat map. Mm -hmm. um, and I think I can start stripping this away, but I I, I feel like I'm probably going to strip the tag or the, the brackets with it. So I play it safe here, just a little bits at a time, unless you know the hack. JavaScript is not my, <laughs> yeah. not my forte. Um, so that should be good. Um, the zoom, we'll leave that. We can strip it out if, if it, if it causes us problems, let's save it. There's a chance that this may blow up, but we'll see. <laughs> Gotta figure out where my page is. All right. Let's refresh. Oh, it did blow up. And, uh, because it's not, I copied the JavaScript stuff. And React is just slightly different in how it does business. Um, so you'll notice that it has map.current here. A simple map.current should work. All right. That covers all of that. Loads now. Yeah, we've got Whoa. some heat map. Oh, that's that right. right. Yeah. So that's the heat map coming from our aggregation. We created functional GeoJSON uh, to make that happen. And then really we just copy and pasted all of our Mapbox code. Um, we didn't really we didn't really didn't do much of the Mapbox um, fresh fresh stuff. I really like the way you use the aggregation pipeline to convert the data into the format that you needed. Uh, yeah. It would have been uh, I mean, I, I, you, that's the right way to do it. And I don't think that that's necessarily the first way I would have done it. it would have, I would have just got the data and it's like, oh, I need to go through, loop through this now and change the shape of everything. It's like, You're not alone because that was my first, that was my first approach to, right. to do it all client side. <laughs> I'm like, no, 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 no. This is too much data. I can't do that. When you work with massive amounts of data, you can't, you can't depend on somebody's web browser. Imagine if I loaded this up on, on my phone, right? Like, mm -hmm. That's not going to work out on a phone. It's going to be too much data. Also, project is like it's a it's a DSL, like a specific language for converting one format into another format. So it's like, why not use that power? I guess um, it's very cool. Yeah. All right. So now for the next step. So we have the heat map there. We did our aggregation. Um, now we probably want to be able to click on any of these hotspots and drill into our search. And I think that would uh, technically bring us to a close. I know we're um, we're about 30 minutes in to this, uh, maybe 45, but we're, we're almost done. Mm -hmm. um, let's start by making an adjustment to our um, 
our newsfeed stuff. So I think we're pretty much done with the Mapbox stuff. We'll do one more thing uh, in there. A lot of this is just going to be MongoDB centric. Uh, so we want to do a, um, a geospatial query. So we want to be able to modify our filter. We also want to be able to handle that uh, if or if not, uh, kind of if the, the latitude and longitude exists. So we're just going to do another one of these uh, right here. Um, so what I can say is something like constant um, lat equals. Didn't, didn't, wasn't I going to try something new this time? I was just going to try to just parse it right up front and uh, Hopefully it doesn't error out. I think it didn't error out last time we tried it, right? I some, somewhere. I can't remember. Yeah, I just did it directly up here and it worked. So I, uh, I'm gonna roll yeah. with it. But uh, latitude longitude is not int, so it is float. And I'm doing this because when we get a, a query parameter, it's gonna be a string, and MongoDB will yell at you if you try to pass in a string for some of these values. Um, so you do need to parse it out to a proper proper numeric value. Uh, this is going to be a request. Let's go ahead and say this is query, maybe lat. Let's do the same thing for longitude. It should be null if it's if if this doesn't work out. Um, let's do an if statement here. So we can say if lat and longitude are basically if they exist and they're not null. Um, what we can say is uh, maybe filter equals let's take the filter that we previously had. So we're we're gonna we're gonna take this uh, the info in the year. It's gonna it's gonna be dumped into our object, and uh, let's go ahead and say that we want to do a proper uh, GeoJSON related query, uh, which is gonna be a little different. So actually, let me let me bring up the docs. See what that looks like. I should bring something up. That's how I search the docs, just a Google search. <laughs> same here, same here. That's exactly how I search the docs. <laughs> but the, search, right. the search in docs is actually quite good. Like, it's yeah. just not very obvious, that, that magnifying glass on the top right. I don't, I've, I've been traumatized by so many other uh, websites that like it's just... Google Everybody's the, the same, there. aren't they? It's like you just assume that the search is not going to be any good. But yeah, I, I, from from what I understand, it is pretty good on this on on the MongoDB website. If you wanted to give it a try. All right, so uh, we have this is what we're looking for. Uh, so we want to provide the field that contains our location data, and then we want to provide this inside of it as well. So let me let me copy this. Oof, my God, what the heck just happened here? All right. Was that reformatting? It formatted it something. Yeah. Uh, maybe because it's there's no strings or whatnot. So, yeah. I, oh. hmm. our, my Python uh, formatter refuses to touch it if it's not valid. But I guess prettier or whatever it's using behind the scenes here is just, uh, it's got more of, yeah. more of a gung ho attitude. <laughs> We're looking for action, location. Um, so that's going to be what we work with here. Um, so the field that has our location is action dot location, and this is acceptable format in MongoDB for queries. So you can use the dot notation there. Um, I think. Still, let me let me put quotes around all of these so that way it doesn't uh, panic attack here. I think that might fix it. Otherwise, I've got other problems somewhere. Uh, no, I think your problem may be the longitude and latitude having angle brackets around them and things. I think it's it it's sort of assuming they're less than and greater than. You're doing some kind of sum. I, I have Possible. no idea. Oh, uh, yeah. So you're right. It went away as soon as I got rid of all those brackets. Um, let me... Uh, oh, you don't trust little... the formatter anymore. Like, this trust uh, is lost now. Yeah, right. Let me. <laughs> uh, all right. I, I got the trust back. Yes. <laughs> all right. So we have a geospatial query in here. So if the latitude and longitude uh, exists, use the previous filter, which is the info in the year. Also add this new element to the object with near. 
Uh, the latitude and longitude does need to change. Um, so this uh, it's always um, longitude followed by latitude here. And then the distance is in meters. So let's go ahead and say that maybe we want 100,000 meters, which I think is like uh, 50 or 60 miles. So it's not that big. It's not that much as far as the distance. That's 100 kilometers. So yeah, it's like six, somewhere between 60 and 70 miles, I think. Yeah, it's uh, it, it should be enough for the example. I could always add another zero to it too, uh, but I don't want to. I don't want if I'm if I want to search inside. Uh, uh, give me a city in Scotland. I don't, I don't know Scotland. If I want to search be, uh, in in a particular city, I probably wouldn't want to search all of Scotland, right? Uh, sorry, I don't understand what you mean. <laughs> like if I if I if I wanted to search uh, for San Francisco, right? Uh, right. Like a, a news story in in San Francisco. I probably yeah. also don't want to include Los Angeles. In that uh, search. No, probably. It's got to be narrow enough. Yeah, I think um, so. So, like, sixty miles should be narrow enough, but still yeah, return so. data. Uh, so we can always tweak the number later, can't we? If, if it's not, yeah, there, we could. We uh, this sh this should be all right. We can test it in a browser actually, because this is just an endpoint. Um, so as long as we provide a latitude and longitude, um, and I am going to rip those off of of here um, somewhere. Uh. That way we're for sure going to have a story. Um, so let's go ahead and say localhost. Um, let's go ahead and say API news. And this is going to be uh, the first one I just copied was longitude. And the last one is um, the latitude here. And we should have at least one result come back. We did. We had more than one. A lot of probably duplicates in here because actually we did strip out the duplicates. It should be should be regulars. So I don't know where so these locations are. You well, haven't provided a latitude there, have you? Because that's just you've only specified. Oh. Yeah. Oh yeah. So you're right. So then this query is not doing the GeoJSON because I I'm making sure that they both exist. So it's just doing this. Oh okay. Got it. Got it. So good good catch on what I forgot to add i had to uh, zoom in <laughs> yeah i have to, really I have to zoom my face in. <laughs> all right there we go now we've got data um and i'm gonna assume that wherever i chose to to type this in i i have no idea where that latitude and longitude points to uh but we have results around the area so somewhere near ireland maybe the irish times yeah that's looking good that worked out. Now you can't. Uh, one thing that I, you got to note here, you can't just go in and expect that geospatial queries work out of the box. Um, you actually do need an index for that. Um, so I'll, I'll show you what I have for an index, and the 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 quality of your index will make or break things. <laughs> as I'll explain. It's so important with collections this size, isn't it? Yes. Uh, am I even in the right data source? I'm not. I clicked on the wrong one. All right, so we have our recent events. If I go to indexes, I probably could have done this in Compass too. Um, so maybe it looks maybe it looks a little better in Compass. Yeah, it does look a little better in Compass. Yeah. Um, all right, so you have to create a geospatial index. If you want to do geospatial queries, um, and you could just create just a geospatial index based on that one field, um, which I did at first. <laughs> so I created an index on uh, uh, the action location uh, and call it 2D Sphere, which is a geospatial index type, um, and it worked. Um, it was slow. There was 15 million documents right. that got dumped in there. <laughs> Uh, so I ended up creating another index. So that, that one I'm not actually using. I could actually remove. I created another index. It's a compound geospatial index that's also sparse. <laughs> so uh, what we're saying here with this particular index is uh, include the info field 
which may or not exist, hence the sparse. So what we're saying is include only the documents in this index where info exists, which is a very small subset of that 15 million. Yeah, uh, that's a the good, info field. good tip. And I'm also indexing based on the year, which could be any year. And then finally, uh, I'm indexing based on the location. So this index will probably only have a few thousand documents in it. And uh, it's it's very fast in comparison to what it could be. Um, it's not that bad to create a geospatial index, uh, but it's just something if you don't have one, uh, it will error. It will say you need a geospatial index. Right. So it actually doesn't run if you don't have the index. It will not run. Just like a full text uh, search index, um, you do need one of those if you want to do full text. Oh, that's good to know. And uh, I won't I won't do it here in this in this uh, stream, but you can actually do full text search with geospatial as well. Um, but that's a topic for another day. Yeah. We have the index. Um, and it works. This this endpoint uh, works with our new with our new logic. Uh, we can we can bring this to a close here um, in just a minute. Um, we want to create this index page for after something was clicked. So what I can actually do is I can copy what we have here, paste it in, and make some minor adjustments because we don't we don't care about the pagination here. Um, so. We're going to want the latitude and longitude from the URL uh, route. And uh, we can just do the same thing that we did uh, basically like what we did here. So I'm going to copy it. It won't it won't be um, limit and page. It'll be um, which we, we're going to call it uh, lat and launch. And uh, I don't know, we're not even going to worry about it, but setting it to do a default on if it's null. Um, so we have uh, lat is going to be at. And longitude will be longitude. Now if I went to this page, uh, it should show um, events based on that location. And let's go ahead and print that out too. So let's let's do um, longitude and latitude. So just this is just for the header. We'll print out what we what we just obtained on line sixteen and seventeen. So let's go back. Uh, I'm going to leave that in there, but I'm going to say events. I didn't like that for some reason. Uh, <laughs> were these were these actual records from our result? I mean, we saw these on the home page, so those aren't filtered these, at all. So there, it didn't work. No. Um, all right, did I make a? Event? I can't. That, see. Yeah. <laughs> well, it 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 hasn't recognized our value, so it, it something went wrong. Yeah. Um, is a query. Query comes from use router. Um, yeah. Here, it's a float. Oh, well yeah. done. I'm surprised it didn't actually pick the the integral part of the number that was being passed in and then ignore the rest. But uh, yeah. I mean, it's good that it didn't. There we go. Yeah, I don't know how JavaScript does business sometimes, but this, yeah, it's got the Irish Times in there again. We've got yep. a limited result set. We have the latitude and longitude. So we have we have a, a landing page that'll work for us. Um, and now all we need to do is accept click events on these hotspots uh, to get us to that page. And then we're good. Right. Let's go to, to Mapbox. Uh, we needed to add another um, listener. So there's we have load, 
what we also want to do is we want to do um, click and um, we need to use a router I actually just I just ripped off the router from search like how 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 Jesse had chosen to do routing um, I just copied this I do the bare minimum sometimes I mean when you when you've had some of the work done for you like why not yeah all right we have events and uh, we want to pass in a query uh, to this to this route the query being um, we want uh, lat it's going to be um, so we, we can actually get data from here um, so if we go back to the mapbox documentation I forgot what it was what it was uh, mapbox quick event so you're just seeing what's inside this event object yeah mapbox has a bunch of events all right so we have a we have a, a longitude lat and then we have a further drill down of that data use it so we have uh, e dot longitude lat dot lat and we have e dot longitude lat dot launch and that's what we want let's try it okay I'll refresh it just in case. Um, I will also zoom in. Uh, so a drag, I don't think it's registered as a click. So, uh, but let's go ahead and see what, what's going on over here. Oh, you made that look so easy. <laughs> nice, right? Nice. So I, I think that sums up what I wanted to accomplish. I mean, we, we accomplished a, a fancy aggregation pipeline for GeoJSON, and we accomplished uh, just a brief geospatial index stuff, and then this very brief geospatial query. That's so much. Like when you think that that was you did that in less than an hour. That's I'm I'm really impressed with that. That was very cool. I'm sure it took more time behind the scenes. <laughs> you know what took more time behind the scenes? The index. <laughs> Oh yes, yes, we were talking because, about that. Yesterday. I mean, I'll, I'm not too ashamed to admit it. I, I don't, I don't work with large data sets, so I, I get thrown uh, a curveball every time I deal with this data set, which is so many millions of documents. And before I had the proper index in place, it was taking like ten seconds to do that yeah. stuff. And I'm like, no, this, I'm going to embarrass myself if I if I go on stream with like this and. I, it took me a while to figure out what I wanted to do for an index. I'm not good at indexing. That's I've been mean. That's the course I've been meaning to do on MongoDB University to really make yeah. sure I properly understand that stuff. Because uh, yeah, it's a. I mean, I wouldn't say it's a dark art, but there's some complexity there, definitely. There is. It's di it's just different. It's different to wrap your head around. Um, it's some people get it right away. Some people like me, it, it, it takes a while. <laughs> um i think that's it though i mean is there anything else we should cover today i i don't think so i think we can say that we're going to be doing some more streaming next week there's no more streams this week if people are enjoying this series um but next week we'll be doing some streams i don't quite know what we're going to be doing on the streams because it's really it's getting towards the end of the hackathon isn't it and so um i think it may, we'll maybe do some office hours or something and answer any questions that people have i guess um but we'll We'll see. We'll let people know on on Twitter, etc. Um, but uh, yeah, I've I yeah I've just realised that this this app is has been told that I've got a green screen because I've got just above the Viking helmet behind me. Yeah. Can I Sparkling. can I point? There's yeah, I a yeah. There's a that's a little Android figure. So it's obviously that's your uh, green screen color of green <laughs> you, sh you should uh you should take that to your advantage and just put like your face in it like uh have that as a little <laughs> backdrop <laughs> <laughs> that that would be kind of weird uh <laughs> give me but, my uh, face uh, if you want <laughs> so we actually have a question i guess before we wrap up i'm looking for the insert oh i'm sorry chris 
um, I didn't post that to the GitHub repo earlier. I will do that immediately after the stream before I go and do anything else. So if you just check that in kind of 10, 15 minutes, um, and I will I will get that code up there. There's that's a question from the stream I did this morning. Where I showed how to build some Realm functions to keep your collection up to date. So, and I did promise to put the code in the repo, but I that did, that did not actually happen. So uh, yeah, very sorry about that. I will I will get that done. Um, and I think that's us for today. That's us for this week. So um, yep, yeah, catch it on demand if you missed it. Uh, it's it's always going to be there on YouTube. Yeah. Thank you, everybody. We'll um, we'll see you next week.